Ahojte, moji milí tretiaci, vítam vás na ďalšej hodine. Ako tradične mám ešte 5. marec, čiže ešte piatok. Vy už máte 8. marec z MDŽ alebo ďalší už piatok. Je možné, že tretia B už má aj po tejto hodine, po tejto téme s praktikantom. A ak náhodou ste si otvorili tento kanál na zopakovanie alebo ste boli na hodine, tak môžete samozrejme využiť. No z tretejúce samozrejme túto hodinu máme teraz online, takže tak ako tradične nezabudnite na stránke facebookovej samozrejme odpovedať na otázku. Ak ste náhodou ešte nezodpovedali, čo predpokladám, že aj je. Ako tradične, tak dávam vám to trošku skôr, aby ste mohli zodpovedať vaše názory, otázky už trošku skôr pred hodinou, nech sa nemusíte k tomu vrácať. No nezabudnite, že máte robiť samozrejme vaše vypracovanie, no a hádam vám teda aj niečo pomôže. Takže ak sa dnes podarí, ak sa dnes podarí, skúsime teda si prejsť, skúsime si prejsť, túto tému Age of Discoveries alebo Age of Explorations do konca. Ďalšou tému samozrejme potom bude Reformation. OK, so uh, the previous lesson we finished uh, just before uh, the voyage of Christopher Columbus. This is actually his English uh, version of his name and uh, even the portraits we have, like two or three of them, none of them is supposed to be realistic because they're either painted uh, many years after his death or just from the... Um, Uh, descriptions actually well, some of these uh, portraits in here are according to his son that people used to talk about him that he was uh, very similar to him that he was really he looked like his father uh, Christopher Colombo was uh, born in Genoa uh, at least the town claims it despite there were some disputes whether it is true or not uh, of course as many other Genoese people uh, in Genoese Republic he was sailing the seas as an, uh, on the merchant ships and had sailed to many islands and this is uh, the place that he actually looked like with his own eyes that he looked uh, he saw his uh, with his own eyes uh, the Atlantic Ocean the Canaries the Azores islands and, uh, even he sailed uh, to Hanzatic uh, League towns in the in the northern sea and in the Baltic and even he sailed twice I, I believe it was twice to Iceland uh during these uh, voyages he got an idea one was this that the globe is earth actually many people it was not only his basic idea because many people believed so because in this period of renaissance humanism many of these ideas came back and this was actually general among the educated people that yeah it is a globe He got an idea that if they actually sailed uh, across the Atlantic to the uh, to the west, so he may go to India and China, to Kitai, uh, to Nippon, to Japan, and to India, as generally they call Southeast Asia, the islands of spices. Uh, when this way, he made one um, tremendous mistake, and uh, concerning not uh, such great ideas about... Uh, uh, about mathematics, maybe not great knowledge about mathematics, he counted the size of the Earth and the globe much, much smaller than it actually is. And what he uh, believed and supposed, and he proposed to the King of Portugal, to this navigation council uh, that was evaluating projects about sailing to Africa and further voyages, Uh, so they denied it. They say that it's not true. Actually, he also asked the Spanish uh, uh, couple. Actually, firstly, he asked uh, Isabella of Castile. Uh, she said that maybe after the marriage, and when the marriage was after the conquest of Granada, as we talked about in the previous lesson. Uh, so there were there were hearings, also disputes with the council of the kingdom, newly established kingdom of Spain. Uh, that actually they ask him like it's possible that it's a uh, globe and it's not falling down he used this egg and this famous stories many legends are there of course but the point is that he somehow persuaded the queen that uh, it is possible to sail with a fleet of five or seven ships across the Atlantic and he claimed that it, it will last about like one month from the Canaries to get to Kitai to China and uh, Actually, she believed him, but it was impossible, and, and even Ferdinand was not very enthusiastic about this idea, so they decided to give him only three ships, and two of them were really small, small caravelas, the only Santa Maria was the big one. So Santa Maria, Pinta, and Nina uh, were three ships that uh, were given. The problem was with the crew, because people, <laughs> sailors, of course, uh, they got a lot of these prejudices and... Uh, 
superstitions and they believe still they believe that uh, if if the earth is a globe so there must be some ending and hell and many people believe that like like one two weeks west of, of sailing west from the canaries there are maybe like just the end of the ocean and just fall to hell for example so not many people wanted to join to participate and even um, prisoners uh, from jails were being offered this uh, many of them they preferred death for capital punishment death penalty than sailing with columbus to uh to the east to asia the, the thing was that they got on the voyage, they got on the voyage and uh, under the flags of uh, Kingdom of Spain, as you can see, that's Castile and Leon, which are, were flags, still heraldic flags of the newly established Kingdom of Spain. But as I said, refused by Portuguese king, they got on a voyage in 1492. Uh, his voyage uh, led to Canaries and that further on uh, across the Atlantic Ocean. Of course, soon uh, soon their people start to, like sailors, the crew started to be very nervous and uh, there were a couple of mutinies, almost mutinies, and he was still promising. Actually, he had no idea. Imagine there was, there hadn't been America in between, so probably there would be, he would be probably killed by his crew. But the point was that uh, uh, seizing, seeing the, the streams, water streams, they uh, changed the direction due to the south uh, and uh, they moved actually after three months on the 12 October 1492. They led on the first island of the Bahamas, islands uh, as a part of America, on the island called Guahan, Guanahani. Uh, this is supposed to be the date of uh, rediscovery of America because we know that America had been discovered not only by Vikings possibly by Phoenicians, but uh, before that by Native Americans from Asia in uh, the prehistoric period. Uh, the point is that on the Bahamas, uh, of course, they uh, landed, they um, started to trade with the uh, local Indians, they tried to baptize them first because, as I said, all the things, they look for gold, they uh, looked for pagans, they can baptize and they can spread Christian faith and new lands. Of course, these islands were uh, proclaimed uh, the ownership of the Kingdom of Spain, of Isabella of Castile and Ferdinand of Aragon. And later on they fell. On the, the, this first voyage they uh, sailed even further on and discovered Jamaica, uh, Cuba, Haiti. And this Haiti, island of Haiti was called Hispaniola. Uh, today is divided on the house in Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic, one of the poorest countries of Central America. And uh, later on, when we came back, of course, he said that he discovered Nippon. He brought some people, locals, uh, parrots, uh, small pieces of gold. They believed they could find more, but it was not enough. So people were, okay, you discovered something. Some believed, yeah, it's Kita, it's China, so let's do that. But they didn't discover any... They didn't find any any spices that would be or porcelain or silk that could have been the proof, the evidence of uh, discovery of Asia. So that's why he got on the voyage again with more and more ships, with colonists uh, on the boards, and of course in Hispaniola and Cuba they start to build uh, towns and cities, new settlements. Actually, it was really problematic because there were many mutinies, many rebellions. They had to bring uh, black slaves from Africa because uh, Indians, as they as Columbus called them and many others because they believed they were in, in India so they were they didn't want to work uh, in the plantations forced so they were dying very quickly uh, so there are many rebellions and even Columbus himself he was appointed the governor of this new world but uh, he was not uh, managing it very very wisely so he was uh, very strict on one hand on the other hand, he was not strict at all uh, but the point was that uh, later on, a lot of people said many bad things about him uh, and later on the king of Spain actually uh, didn't allow him to go on the further voyages. Uh, so he died uh, at home, uh, actually celebrated by some people, but most like being mocked because many people realized that probably it's a new continent. And until his death, he uh, was refusing to accept that he discovered the new world. Uh, still, he, on these voyages, he discovered the, not only the islands in the Caribbean Sea, but also he mapped the coast of uh, uh, of uh, Central America and also of Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago, the islands in here. 
and uh, still it was not enough. So he believed there are like great uh, possibilities for further discoveries, but it was not enough. So and this painting, so even Isabella is like, oh my God, face, you know that uh, Columbus is in here. Mm, actually, I was wondering that maybe for the next uh, lessons, that can be a great idea to uh, for you, like a task for assignment, to create some maps or uh, like cartoons. So, you know, second graders actually did great uh, cartoons about prehistory, so maybe something can be useful for you. Okay, let's move on because we have many things to pass to go today. From many movies that were being shot, this is probably the most famous. Uh, it's 1492, Conquest of Paradise, with Gerard Depardieu, uh, very actually well acted, uh, and with famous uh, uh, soundtrack, uh, and Ridley Scott, famous director, of course, and, okay, the quality, actually music was not all the, all the time, like this. But still, you have actually with some of mistakes or legends being present there. Uh, uh, so they believe, so they depicted it actually with nice way. So it's worthy to to see. Of course, it's much more adventurous than we have in here. Maybe I should watch it again after many years because it's like almost 30 years that I've seen it. Uh, last time, okay, in Guanahani and discovery like uh, Native Americans and Caribbean. And how they try to manage it and building, of course, church and so on. So really interesting. When you watch the movie, you will see. Uh, remind, it will remind you many things in here. Okay, Isabel of Castile. So, Conquest of Paradise. Let's skip it. So, the extraordinary story. Okay. Of the okay. So let it be. Let's move on because. Other great stories were not shot, that I'm really uh, sorry about that. One of many depictions of Columbus landing uh, in here with uh, Spanish voyagers and sailors. And for Indians, they were like, uh, almost like gods, you know, with um, coming with the huge ships and so on. So, so many of these tribes uh, suppose them to be even like uh, divine uh, creatures or like great people and worthy to trade with them and uh, sub be subjected to them. Some of them were uh, very hostile and of course they uh, were fighting and defending. Not only things that they brought with uh, Christianity and some like, like weapons and some brand new food, but actually they brought diseases and violence and so on. So this is the thing that made Portugal scared that Spain, what if Spain, what they discovered, is not the new world, but it's Asia. And imagine at the time, Portuguese had just got to South Africa and they were on the way, like somewhere near Mozambique maybe, and they were on their way to India. For 50 years, they were organizing voyages and Spanish, they just took over uh, all these contributions of there and they discover Asia. So just like this, you cannot see there is a my, there is a mouse in here. Spain got to Qatar before us, you know, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, not very favorite footballer of mine. Uh, it's like neither Barcelona, but okay, let's ask the Pope to arrange some agreement. This might like really ridiculous, uh, Mams are about one thing that Portugal start to complain. What if Spain really got to Asia? So they want to have an agreement that uh, Spanish would not claim India and China for themselves. Of course, Spain said, but come on, we have already discovered it. So Bob had no other possibility only to ask advisors, humanistic scholars, like, what's the point? And it took them about like one and a half year because uh, Columbus came back from his first voyage after like three months. So uh, only in Spain, in Sevilla, people got to know. And maybe in February or March 1493. So it took another year for the Pope to uh, arrange agreement according to contemporary knowledge of the world that yeah they accepted that the, the earth is a globe but it's much bigger than Columbus expected so they thought that probably Spain discovered some brand new islands maybe small islands and Portugal still got Africa which they deserve because for decades of uh, of conquest of, of voyages they would they should deserve that so that's why they decided in the Treaty of Tordesillas that the world will be dividing according to meridian, I believe it was like 38th meridian, Czepoludnik, and this uh, eastern part would be uh, like 
place or, or territories of Portugal, so in the sphere of Portugal, because they expected that India and China will probably be in this Portuguese sphere, so it's okay. But what Spaniards discovered, that it should not belong to Portugal. Why? They discovered it. But maybe there are huge continents, so it would be good also for them. And if the world is really global a bit like this, so somewhere in between there would be uh, this 38 meridian from the other side, that would be Portuguese and Spanish sphere of influence. So uh, this was interesting that... Uh, this was interesting that they both of the countries accepted it, and since that moment, Spaniards tried to get as far uh, as possible to the west to claim new territories like the Philippines, because they were just behind the, the this meridian, and on the other hand, Portugal sailing to India, which they believe it will be all theirs. So on every voyage, they try to sail not along the coast of Africa, but they try to sail from Canaries, around Canaries because they were Spanish, uh, along the meridian uh, in and looking, uh, searching for some land and islands to claim it before Spain would go there. And in this way, as you can see, small tip of land, small piece of land of South America is behind this Spanish quarter, this Spanish half. And that was why Portuguese even discovered and colonized Brazil. And that's why Brazil is the only Portuguese-speaking country of Spanish, uh, of South America. Okay, so this is interesting, Treaty of Tordesillas, and important that the biggest country. And this is a nice example because even the guy who got to India as the first one was Vasco da Gama and uh, as you can see in 1498 so six years after the discovery of America uh, Portuguese it was like really big project and really difficult to get there so it took them another six years when Vasco da Gama and Portuguese finally got to India but as you can see they even uh, sailed to Capo Verde to Cap Verde Islands and even in here to discover for some new lands what if there are some and rich islands so they wanted to claim it before Spaniards can found it find it and uh, maybe claim it and there may be war in here so Portuguese, uh, this Portuguese navigator, again, I just tapped the cell to India. This is India. And here he tried to establish the trade post. So he's actually the first one who got to India. In here, for example, in the city of Calcutta or in Goa, brand new town that Portuguese overall. But what was a surprise that in here, if you would see the, the rest of the painting, the Indians, uh, Rajas in India, they will come. Like, okay, Portuguese will come, let's do trade. So what do you offer? Ah, oh, we got uh, gold. We got gold too. We got weapons, but we have weapons from Ottoman Turks and from Arabs. Uh, I don't know, we can bring some products and goods from leather and so on and food. We have enough food, we have enough products from leather and we can mm, they can bring it from Arabic countries because they had, India had excellent trade with Arabic countries and Ottoman Empire. And that was the point, that it was so close for them, but because of the obstacle in the form of Ottoman Empire was so far, so Portuguese had really nothing to offer to them. The only things they could really offer to them were slaves, like African slaves that India, in, in India, Hinduism refused to have slavery. The other uh, thing was to bring ivory, and that was much, that was a different thing, despite they had elephants, but not really big ones. So Portuguese, next time when they sailed to India, they had to bring also battleships with a lot of cannons, and actually to fight and defeat Indians in order to allow them to give to be given permit to settle down. So Indians allowed them to settle in Goa, in Calcut, to open at least some parts, some quarters, some boards, or Goa as their own. So this was another thing, and Portuguese realized they probably don't have enough men and enough finances to be like military fleets, like Spain could do that, and, and conquer all the lands. They couldn't do that, only to get some land to force local rulers to let them open some port or something like that. And that happened also in uh, their further discoveries of Portugal that is in the previous map. I should go back again. Uh, yeah, in here, because from India, from Goa, as you can see, uh, they sailed to uh, the Islands of Spices, to Indonesia. And also, even in China, Guangzhou or uh, Macau, for example, and uh, especially Indonesia, they uh, settled and built only, like, not whole land, but they built these, like, trade posts in here. So, actually, the real colonized territories are only uh, along the African coast, especially in Mozambique and in Brazil, in South America. So, uh, in other places, there are small towns, which easily are easily to attack 
attack, uh, easy to attack by their enemies and later on by British and especially by the Dutch who will claim and actually occupy especially Indonesia from here and French and British will banish them from India. So the only places where Portuguese remain were in some Portuguese-speaking countries of Africa, logically, and in Brazil, too. Okay, so let's move on. Bartolomeu Diaz, Christoph Columbus, and we had Vasco da Gama, Treaty of Tordesillas in here. Uh, then we have chronologically uh, voyages of Florentine navigator Amerigo Vespucci, and from the name probably know what I'm going to talk about. In uh, 14 between 1499 and 1502, Amerigo Vespucci. Uh, he sailed to Latin America and he tried to actually map these lands. And uh, when they were crossing mountains of Costa Rica, of course, as walking, so they got on the peaks on the mountains and they could see a huge ocean from the other side. From the other side. So Amerigo Vespucci was the first one who officially issued maps with expecting a huge ocean because all the rumors, all what uh, Native Americans were telling them, Indians, but did you know they were not Indians, uh, were telling them that there is a big ocean and there is no Chinese, obviously, or India, Indian civilization behind. So he was the first one who suggested that it's the new continent and they start to call it the new world. Uh, later on, not himself, but German cartographers who were issuing and publishing and printing new maps and making new globes in this first uh, quarter of the 16th century in Germany, in Nürnberg, they start to issue maps with a continent name according to Amerigo Vespucci, America. So this is how brand new name of the new world uh, started to be used, but it took another century when uh, actually even Europeans, other countries accepted this brand new name, America. So that's why when you talk about Native Americans, it's also European name. Uh, so when I asked, we had the lecture from Colombia, Hector Medoja. So uh, when I asked him, how would you call like, yourself, like in this way, general peoples of Americas, I say indigenous people, povodni, domorodoy bivatelia. So this is America like as we know it. Okay, Walza Miller map from 1507. That would should be the first one. And uh, I wanted to show you because here in Wikipedia they have really incredible a huge big map of the world from 1507. Uh, I believe I downloaded and it's big like 40 megabytes. Actually, I'm like with wire uh, online connection as you can see how slowly it is uploading. So I didn't use it. I didn't want to use it in presentation, but it's really cool to check it out. And you can see how they imagine world in Germany from uh, at the time uh, contemporary knowledge. So what was there? We have Europe. Let's click it. Make it closer if possible. You can see Polonia, Poland. Uh, Carpathian Mons. We have Slovakia in here, guys. See? So we could maybe find um, there some, maybe even some towns from Slovakia. I was not able to analyze them. But the point is in here that America is just said, okay, I can come be, I'll take it back, probably. That America is only according to voyages in Caribbean, discoveries of the Actually, all east coast of America, because British, uh, actually the English, sailed in here. They discovered something, Spaniards, Portuguese. But still, it was before the first uh, voyage around the world when the Southern Passage was discovered, Magallanes Straits. But Africa, as you can see, is really mapped in great way, in in detailed way. Arabic Peninsula too. Not sure about Iranian, so Persian Empire. They were not sure, but already in India and some islands discovered in here, but including Australia. Uh, supposing that there should be some uh, terra australis in latin it means southern land in here so still kitai indonesia india because india indonesia malaysia for them it was no difference that's why even english start to call these territories india and even today they use description west indies for uh Caribbean for Jamaica, Haiti, and so on. Zapata, India, and Eastern India is in here. That's why also many countries establish kind of like business colonizing companies, especially the Dutch were the first ones, and later British and French too. And it was called East Indian Company. And it was first Dutch, later British, and so on. Okay, Waldze Miller map. So he was the first one who used this term America. Let's close it. Okay, what have in here? So let's move on. 
Okay, this <laughs> I believe you understand this fun. Like I, I hope it's not really ridiculous. Uh, Pedro Alvarez Cabral. Um, he was Portuguese uh, navigator uh, who on the voyage to India with a huge ship uh, fleet of ships. Just a coincidence got this tip of land and. Uh, he discovered Brazil. So since that time, Portuguese were gradually settling in here, and they realized that probably this place is a bit better, especially when it goes south of Equatorial, in which uh, Rio de Janeiro and uh, Porto Seguro and many others are really good to settle. The other thing was that at the time, uh, Spaniards were concerned more on discovering uh, new kingdoms sailing in here because they realized that somewhere in here there are rich empires uh, of uh, Indians, we know Aztecs and Peruvians, and even like when Spaniards sailed in here there was Amazon River with a huge delta and dense rainforest full of uh, mosquitoes, so now they were not very willing to settle, them, settle there in those places, mostly maybe in North America, so Portuguese had enough time to settle it even beyond the, the meridian. 38 meridian according to Treaty of Tordesillas. So Pedro Alvarez Cabral is uh, this Brazilian guy and this is probably hero, the biggest hero of all these uh, all these voyages. I really can't understand why there is no any amazing blockbuster Hollywood movie or great HBO <laughs> HBO uh, TV series about Fernando Magalhães because his expedition was uh, his sailors were the first guys who sailed around the world and it was it was really more geographic than uh, conquest uh, conquering uh, conquistador so between 1519 and 1522 first voyage around the world was uh, uh, organized, planned, and commanded at the beginning for the first hull by Portuguese navigator Fernão Magalhães. But he led Spanish fleet. What a surprise! Just like Christopher Columbus, as when I told you that uh, he proposed it to the King of Portugal, so the Navigation Council of Portugal denied that it's unrealistic. When Fernão Magalhães gave this project again to the King of Portugal, João II, so he asked the Navigator Council and they said, no, it's impossible. They said, okay, we understand that how big is the earth, but Portugal does not have enough resources to organize it. We would need like 30 ships and still it is impossible to feed all the people because if there is no land, since like South America uh, to Asia, to China, to Philippines, it's impossible to survive it, to keep enough fresh water, enough uh, supplies, uh, feed enough sailors and you need a lot of sailors just to get through the ocean across the ocean So they denied because it was they said we don't have technologies for this moment Just like today we cannot go to Mars, you know, Elon Musk can make it but you know these spaceships are just Exploding blowing up so you need a lot of time for technological Advancement just like even with vaccines it takes it takes many years not months It's great surprise greater than to do after one year since the epidemic we have some vaccination so it's, it's almost impossible. It's a miracle for them. So just like uh, Christoph Columbus, Fernand, Fernand Magalhães, he turned to the enemies of Portugal to Spain and he offered to King Philip. And he was happy because last time when the Portuguese refused this project of Columbus, so they were very lucky that suddenly they had America. And actually at that time, at that moment, they were being conquering this Aztec empire. So for them it was, okay, let's do that. But again, Spain didn't have so much power as Portugal in Navy, so they could provide him only five ships, still much better than nothing from Portugal. So that's why Ferdinand Magellan, now Fernando Maga Magellan was called like in more Latin form to be like for mostly for Spanish. And this is also the version that English uh, language uses, Ferdinand Magellan. So this is how you know it. So this was a thing that he brought also commanders from Portugal, but all the crew were Spaniards. So that caused a lot of conflicts, a lot of troubles since the beginning. He already in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, there was mutiny that one of the ships, not happy that they have Portuguese commanders like Slovaks and the Hungarian commanders or Hungarian soldiers being commanded by Slovak or somebody. So they would mutiny. So mutiny is booty, um, posado. So one of the ships came back and they tell really bad words about Magellan to the king of Spain. So for upcoming three years, 
uh, Magellan was really hated person in Spain because of the gossips that this mutinite ship brought back. Actually, the other mutiny was uh, in the Brazilian coast, but uh, then they had to spend winter in Brazil when they gathered enough uh, uh, enough uh, resources, so they sailed down to the south. But you know that South America goes really far to the south, and it was getting much, much closer. The climate was getting much harsher because of the bad wind. They couldn't find their way. They had to stay for another month only in the south of America. So you see that actually very short way, and they couldn't get through. Then... Uh, I have to show you this part. Finally, uh, they were actually um, trying to search for any fjord, any bay in here. When they got to Montevideo which in Buenos Aires, this is mouth of the river La Plata, that is really huge. They believe this is a southern passage because of different wind. But then they realized after like one month of sailing that it's just a big river, you know. So they, they f continued further and because of terrible wind, so they had to spent summer in real terrible uh, places of Patagonia. Even they called it Patagonia uh, or the land of fire, Terra del Fuego, because uh, Indians, as they're floating, so Indians were burning big fires to scare them, maybe to warm themselves. So they call it the fire, uh, the fire land. And when they got to the land and one Indian, not afraid of them, uh, Patagonian came to them. So he was really big guy. Maybe this one, because they're not very tall. And this one was extremely tall, and it was very friendly. And he was just so showing, like, ah. And they, what do you want? So they, some of them, maybe he's hungry. So they gave him, like, this uh, draft, draft bread, and he didn't eat it. He swallowed it at once. Like, and, yeah, one more. So they gave him, like, a whole piece of bacon, and he swallowed it. So they were laughing at him loud, you know, and they start to bring any crazy things and he was eating endeavoring it all of them actually one of them he brought them his belt uh, like leather belt and he swallowed it one of them he actually captured like live living rat from a ship and he swallowed even rat alive so as this giant was like great amusement so they captured him put him in a in a cage and because it got extremely big he had they start to call even these local indians or be americans Patagonas, which in Portuguese means pata, it's a, it's a food, and gona, it's big, so like big food people. Uh, this guy, of course, in a, in locked in a cage, so this guy he died soon. Uh, just great, couldn't understand why they locked him when they fed him. So just like proper Europeans, they behave terribly to any guys. Finally, after months of uh, sailing in the fjords of uh, Magellan Strait again, maybe I, I have to show you. Uh, the map of the world, so you can see how harsh it possibly is. Uh, so Google map, Oops, of course. Uh, so they finally found the passage. They found finally found the passage, and uh, uh, they realized that they got to the open ocean in here. So let's look in here and look at this. So how many? Okay, I can switch to satellite. This is uh, showing you more. Come on, switch to satellite. Okay, it's it's even here. So imagine that they had to uh, look for every single bay, every single bay in here, and explore it. And they realized there is no passage in here. Okay, so the, the extremely almost like Antarctic Antarctic uh, conditions. They finally managed to find their way in this labyrinth, in this maze of fjords. And when they got to the open sea, suddenly caught into streams and uh, warm wind, they realized they're probably in the, uh, in the here. The problem was they didn't expect this ocean to be so big. Imagine. And even today, when you are maybe shipwrecked in the, in the ocean, you sooner or later you got on some islands, and they didn't. Look at this. No fresh water, no food. They had to survive like several months, half years. Soon they ran out of water. Only some rain. When the rain came, they captured something. But soon they ran out of or even of this drought bread. Still, I'm in the Pacific Ocean, guys. And here in the middle, some of the wind stands still. And all the ships, because they remain only three ships. Of course, for a couple of months, some of them they lost, you know. And they stand still in the middle of the ocean, so they start to call it Pacifico. What sound of Pacifico? Pacific it means it means calm, 
not like windless. Actually, this is the the most terrible ocean with the biggest waves in it. So, anyways, finally, after a couple of months, when they uh, they of course they did they didn't eat like their uh, bodies like cannibalism was not present but they were dying like flies in here when the wind started to flow so again yeah they were happy but again months and months and dying one by one and finally when they got to some islands this Caledonia but they got this is Fiji and they missed actually many islands in here in Polynesia in Hawaii islands and many many others but they got a bit more to this north and they got to the Philippines. So imagine this tremendous distance, tremendous, and they didn't catch any of Micronesia, Marshall Islands. You got actually there are many islands around, and they could actually see it from the distance. Uh, birds, they didn't even see a bird. Actually, on the way they found some island, but that there was no water. There was only green grass, nothing, you know, nothing to be eaten, nothing eatable. You know, so this is was really dramatic and um, incredible. You see, they, they missed all the French Polynesia, Tahiti Islands, Pitcairn Islands that was found by mutinite, uh, mutinite British expedition. And all the people living there are actually remains of pirates, mutinite sailors. So incredible expedition. When they finally came to the Philippines, local actually will come there friendly uh, because they have already met with Portuguese. And they knew that Europeans, they possess guns and weapons that could be uh, like easily to fight against their enemies. So they, when they fed uh, the Spaniards of Magallanes, they asked Magallanes like if he could, they could help them with fighting their enemy tribe or kingdom. So he agreed and he got in a skirmish somewhere on the beach and one of the enemy spirits hit his leg and he died. Uh, so this is the thing that after surviving this incredible stuff, he got into a local unimportant conflict in the Philippine Islands and he died. Uh, the commander, the commanding of the ships was taken over by Vittorio Del Cano, that was uh, Del Ciano, that uh, Del Cano that became captain, not very respected, but he led the expedition further on. Of course, now there was a chance they could meet with Portuguese ships, uh, but they needed a lot of load of spices to prove they got in here. So for upcoming months, they were sailing around the Sulawesi and uh, Borneo and uh, Guinea, Papua, and uh, they actually shipwrecked. So they decided and spent some weeks in one of some, near some of these islands, and uh, they decided to sacrifice one of the ships because only two remained. So one of the ship was sacri sacrificed uh, in order to restore the others and keep it safe. All also, they knew that if they met with, if they meet with some Portuguese ship, they would kill them because that would be proof that Spaniards again had a triumph of sailing around the world with discovery of America. They wouldn't let them be. So the only possibility for them was not to sail to India and around Africa like anybody else. They had to avoid Portuguese ships. So again, from Malaysia to sail across Indian Ocean. Even they missed Madagascar in South Africa. If stop, only to get water. If possible, it's impossible. Sail around and again Atlantic to avoid all the ships. Maybe Capo Verde, Sao Tomas, and Prince Island. So these Portuguese, but this is all Portuguese. They had to avoid them. Capverde Islands, and that was the thing that now, if uh, whether this Pacific Ocean was incredible, uh, incredible uh, adventure. And uh, the thing, so the other was uh, across the Pacific Ocean, the other was, as you see from Malaysia, almost, they're so close to Australia, they didn't discover it. So they sailed down the Indian Ocean, they didn't, didn't even stop in South Africa, sailed in here. Uh, a ship called Victoria, here in the picture, uh, actually met with Portuguese ship. Uh, somewhere near Cap Verdean Islands, but uh, before uh, Portuguese could spot their flag, so very quickly they exchanged flag, Spanish flag for the Portuguese, and Spanish sailors were quiet and only Portuguese uh, commanders were talking to the Portuguese. So they even gave them some supplies. Of course, they said they are just like some lost conquistador ship, Portuguese ship for many months. Portuguese were surprised, a bit suspicious. But they held them and uh, they, okay, so they followed. But soon they come to, they got to the closest uh, port. There were rumors because many of them saw some ghost ship sailing and they said, they start telling that maybe that's the lost Magalian ship. So immediately all Portuguese fleets start to hunt for them. 
uh, ship Victoria was full of holes. Uh, they were just using uh, new and uh, new black pillars to fill the gaps in the in in the in the board. Uh, all the all the sails were torn to the pieces. So ship was moving not because of the wind but because of the water streams. So very slowly uh, it was slow coming down. And I don't have to tell you that from original 500 men, only 17 men survived. Great heroes who came to uh, came to Spain to Sevilla to the mouth of this I think it's Guadalquivir river. I'm not sure. And they were not welcome like heroes. They will come. They were immediately. Uh, they were immediately uh, put in a jail because still for three years, uh, Spaniards believed that Magallanes betrayed them, and they didn't do that. So only gradually, in a couple of days, they realized that they really they were the great heroes who managed to sail around the world. So incredible story that has no movie. Uh, what I told you is from the book by Stefan Zweig, famous Austrian uh, novelist. Uh, I read his book in Slovak language that he just described uh, the diary, Captain Diary, Captain Bo uh, Diary of uh, Del Cano, who described his stories in this way. So you can read it. This is the link to the PDF form in English. So I believe it's easy for you to, to read it. And another is a story, like a simple history about Magellan. It's, I believe it's like a short video and it, they can give you some different ideas or different perspective about this great voyage in here. While it's been here, I'll check the time, 90 minutes. I believe it will be okay. Okay, so let's move on. A Simple History, Epic History TV collaboration. In the late 1400s, okay, so in this way you can a have great new age of European You have something on the style of John Green stuff. Okay, 38, one year Charles younger than me, myself at this age, so... Until when okay, so... Was... Were forced to... Just read it, it's easy to find, so circumnavigation... A local chief from the island of okay, Mag... So he tried to reach the boats. The death of Magalienz... And were a... And Del Cano's voyage. Later tried to return to and Spain as you can see there... The Pacific. Had to come back... Sebastian here. El Cano. Sebastian Del Cano, sorry for Died that. before they found fresh provisions at Cape okay. Verde. Cape Verde and so... Beautiful thing, be great heroic voyage, but there is nothing in here. Uh, about to show you better picture, so <laughs> I believe it will be enough for you. So let's move on because this is one of the last of the voyages. Of course, I will mention some of them, but when we go chronologically, there will be two other things in here, and that's the Spanish conquest of American empires. I really need to follow my notes because I would be able to tell you for hours about this. Uh, among the countries that you mentioned that you we we haven't had yet. And uh, we would like to know something. Many of you mentioned Mexico, or Brazil. Many of you, actually one class mentioned like Asia. Come on, it's not a country, Africa. So mention the country. Uh, so this is the point that uh, in this way, uh, there were so-called pre-Columbian civilizations. And this is called pre-Columbian America. Among the most famous, I pick up the three. One at the moment of Columbus uh, already gone. That were Mayans. Mayas. Uh, we're living on the peninsula called Yucatan. You cannot see it, but I can see it here behind my head in Mexico. And they had like a uh, golden age of this civilization in our early Middle Ages. They were able to build like big stone cities with pyramids that were not like tombs like in Egypt, but mostly like ziggurats in Babylon. They were most like temples. And in the top, uh, they had these temples and uh, doing the sacrifices and even observing uh, observing sky because just like uh, uh, any other ancient civilizations, uh, they needed to have two great things. One was writing system, and Mayans developed their own picture of writing that uh, was taken over by Aztecs. The other thing was astronomy. Uh, they had their own uh, calendars with movings of planets and stars, and really because no, they had no other influences, it was incredible uh, their the knowledge in here. So they used their own calendars with circles, with cycles, and uh, and this writing system. We don't know why the Mayans died out, maybe because of epidemic, maybe because of attacks of other tribes, but later on, uh, like two, three centuries after them, from the north, from the territories of southern, northern Mexico, the Aztecs overall central Mexico, and specific uh, 
geographical position, uh, what is nowadays the uh, Ciudad de Mexico, the capital city of Mexico, which is actually a huge lake called Texcoco. In the middle, there is one island. They built a capital city, Tenochtitlan, on it. Uh, they uh, make connections with a system of bridges. It looked like Venice at that time. Then you have like big plain around, and then you had high mountains that make a circle because it is a huge volcano. And actually, one of the sites still working, Popocatépetl, one of the most active volcanoes. And just above the city of Ciudad de México today, with 20 million, maybe more 30 million population city and even when spaniards go there they said it is the most beautiful city in the world like they have never seen such a, such a the other but still aztecs were supposed even among their neighbors and native americans the other indians to be like barbarians because they from their religion they brought also need to uh, have bloody human sacrifices for that reason they also organize hunts human hunts but like head hunts to uh, surrounding tribes in order to have enough people to sacrifice to the gods. Actually, they also took over achievements of the Mayans, so that's why in Tenochtitlan, their capital city was really big, huge, with the pyramids, uh, with temples, with huge palaces, and organization of labor. Actually, at that time, Aztec Empire was already on decline, uh, perhaps because of bad sanitation, bad health conditions, arriving uh, diseases, not only to mention that Europeans had brought it before, so there had been some contact. About this, Mel Gibson uh, shot a movie, uh, uh, Apocalypto, in which like, he got a fictional stories about these Aztecs, capturing one guy, he tried to get this like survival, and I don't want to spoil it, but the end is that uh, Spaniards are coming, and it's really like symbolic for this reason that Aztecs as the great like conquerors of this uh, Central America so they're finally conquered destroyed by another conquistadores conquerors the other empire was similar to Aztecs but a bit different and it was empire in Southern America called Incas uh, their central part was in Peru with their capital Cusco high in the mountains and made with excellent roads just like Romans with the uh, with the stone buildings uh, with the bridges over the gorges and uh, at the time they had just at the end of their civil war that actually made them expand from uh, like half of Chile down on to Colombia and created one of the biggest empires in the world of those times and uh, they could actually to use and actually this end in the ends high in the mountains they had llamas you know for transportation they had kipu that was their their specific uh, way of uh, alphabet and so on also for using the, some of the symbols of them was coca that was this plant that even today in bolivia and peru they chew the leaves and some alkaloids are being released and it allows them to s breathe and properly work or run in uh, in this like 3000 meters altitude. Machu Picchu is their symbol, but uh, it is last of the fortress from the times after arrival of the Spaniards. Still, especially uh, epidemics and especially smallpox uh, and armies of conquistadores uh, annihilated most of the population. And we expect that only 10% of uh, original pre-Columbian population survived. Still, many people arguing because even estimated numbers are much bigger because nine, at least 90% of uh, Native Americans died because of European arrival and their diseases before even uh, be, be, they have even uh, seen Europeans. Some of the parts of, let's say, United States of Amazonian forest saw Europeans for the first time in the 19th or even in the 20th century. Still, if we have time, I have to check it because it's really big way. So 12 minutes. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. Uh, Conquest of the Aztec Empire, as you can see, 1519, 1521. I have to read it for you because it's uh, part of the what we call the prophecy. So the ancient legend prophesied that quite Chalcoatl, the bearded, fair skin. Toltec, it's another of Mayan, uh, so Toltecs were the other guys after Mayans, ruler god, because there have been originally two gods, the god of light and god of darkness, would return from the east in the year of Ke'akatl, 
to reclaim his kingdom. The point was that uh, at the beginning of the myth of creation of the Aztecs and Toltecs, there were these two Toltec main gods, and this dark god, dark god, god of uh, death, and so he won. And this fair, white skinned, fair guarded, bearded god. Uh, promised to come back, but he went to exile somewhere across the sea to the east. And he prophesied that one day he would come back. And Ke Akatl was year 1519. Evil omens that had confounded the Aztec priests and sorcerers of the previous decade only heightened Moctezuma's anxiety. Moctezuma was the king of Aztecs at the time. First, despite fair weather, the waters of Lake Texcoco had suddenly boiled up, flooding the island of their capital city. Then, inexplicable conflagration had consumed the temple of a chief god, Huchiopochtli, and that was the, the other guy, the dark god. The voice of a woman wailing in the night had repeatedly disturbed the city's slumber. Immense comet with fiery tails had been seen shooting through the daytime skies. Uh, so you see comets coming, and even the column of fire had appeared in the east every night for the entire year. That was Popocatépetl, but there were Spaniards coming closer. All of these were taken to be signs of Quetzalcoatl's imminent return. And in this year, 1519, suddenly Spaniards appeared with their beautiful ships, with their beards, with their white skin. For Aztecs, there were no others, only, only uh, uh, God Quetzalcoatl coming back home. This uh, video, uh, again, like reconstruction of Tenochtitlan, so at, let's have a look at, brief uh, look at it, I believe it will soon upload by the time uh okay come on please okay another so invicta another great uh, source uh, mostly about military history after having covered the rise of the aztec empire okay, it's time this we take guy, a closer this look at it showing Lake about this like teixcoco according to the second and, uh, location we've become about a culture and civilization of aztecs in here so it was really interesting. I their individual you to rulers. watch it. And system of bridges, oh. how it is. This can be a bit overwhelming. It was being built, our divided, and uh, ruled, used to run the city. and how Spaniards uh, had other dimensions exotic animals, them, while the aquarium how has yet more features. In the form also, Aztecs had this fish, depiction, all the lapa, volumes written on the, the you know, painted on the, the letters. Products, so, which uh, brought in fresh water from springs. Really Actually, from excellent, the even in Europe, that's that it could really, hold as many as 60,000 people really and gold filled feather quilts. They had chance. Walls many of these uh, illustrations were done at the stamp with color. And every day the women uh, about on Spaniards were welcome, so they had to scene. watch as uh, these Aztec included farmers, are fishermen, merchants, and nobles, priests, craftsmen, soldiers, and opening like their chances and their level of activity. The population at its peak is estimated to have been in excess of 200,000 individuals, with the surrounding small towns pushing. They were Total from the local tribes, and this is the thing that over the mountains, often they are over the mountains, being yeah, largely made movie, up of unsophisticated uh, tribes. We'll talk more about the various uh, details of Tenochtitlan and other Mesoamerican cities. Many local Indian Native now, American tribes decided to help Spaniards in the conquest of Aztec Empire, and this will happen again with Incas because both of these empires were actually aggressive uh, in their own territory. So suddenly, Spaniards surprisingly had chance how to destroy them. So what happened? In April 1519, conquistador Hernando Cortes embanked in Mexico with 400 men. Uh, their main aim to find gold and to spread Spanish power and Christian faith. Due to prophecy, they were welcomed by King Montezuma, the ruler of Aztecs. On their way to the central part of Mexico, they passed also the territories of Tlaxcala tribes and they warned them because they knew, they understood that they were not gods, they were just white people. They told them, these guys are going to kill you. Eating the god is giving the power. So be aware and we will help you anytime because they are our oppressors. Still, they uh, they felt self-confident. They pretended they were gods and so on and they were led to Tenochtitlan. Uh, Rando Cortes had one girl next to him, Manoche. She was uh, probably Tlaxcala, I'm not sure. A uh, girl that she could was super talented for languages, and she became like main interpreter and translator for them, and advisor and like the actual wife of Hernando Cortes. 
What happens? So yeah, Marina is uh, of course uh, called in here, will come by uh, and then depicted in these things. However, Spaniards, when they got to Tetanochtitlan, they didn't want to be like gods in there. So during the night, they imprisoned for Moctezuma in his own palace and they forced him to proclaim the loyalty to the king of Spain and to the Jesus Christ. Of course, then he realized what a mistake he did and uh, that they had to confess to different some other guy that they didn't know. Uh, he refused that. When Aztecs in the city realized what is happening, immediately besieged the uh, they immediately besieged the the temple and the palace, and they attacked it. Uh, when they couldn't defend against 10,000 of Aztecs, they brought even Moctezuma to the fortification. But now, when they realized that their god, divine ruler, is being uh, captured by some of these Europeans, uh, uh, another evil uh, devils, so they start to shoot at him, and one of the stones, and it hit him, when they saw blood, they killed him, so he fell down, and he was killed by his own people. So Spaniards tried to defend the palace, but it was impossible, so during the night, the only possible chance for them was to attack the gates, to open the gates, and try to fight, fight through the crowds of Aztec Indians. During the night, they called La Trista Noche, La Trista Noche, the sad night, the sad night, uh, Spaniards managed they, of course, threw the corpse to the river. They managed to fight through the uh, bridges and even when Aztecs were destroying these bridges down, so they had like leathers carrying with, with them and handing like pontoon bridges over and fight through the night. Most of them died and when finally they climbed to the mountains in the morning, they turned back and they saw when the uh, Hernando Cortes, he made the rest under the cypress tree that is still standing there, he just looked back and he saw this beautiful city that he mentioned they mentioned that it was the most beautiful was in fire and thousands of people died and screaming he promised that he was sad but then he promised that he will come back the next year in Kokwari for the glory of Jesus and he did and the next year they came back with reinforcements still it was only 1200 men but again we, we accompanied with 50,000 allied Tlaxcala warriors Indians and they attacked Tenochtitlan and they annihilated all the population they pulled down all the pyramids all the temples all the buildings because for them it was it was pagan and on the side of this great pyramid they built the main down the biggest church in Mexico with the biggest square with the biggest flag of Mexico in here. In this way, with help of locals, they destroyed Aztec Empire and overall Mexico and started to settle it down and mix with local cultures. For that reason, Aztec in Mayan heritage has created main part of the Mexican identity. So as you can see, football team of Mexico, very popular god the eagle of Moctezuma about eating a snake that is symbol of Quetzalcoatl. So this is actually a symbol of uh, like symbolical defeat of Aztec and Indian Native American uh, heritage ab above the Spanish conquistadores, despite it actually it, it is mixed up. Uh, Aztecs at History Crunch, another storyline in here that you can see. I believe I have at least five minutes and I can pass very quickly through uh, this stuff and I believe that you can see me you can hear in the microphone that was not useless to use it and Okay, three minutes guys, so I'm probably not going to tell you most about Aztecs. Okay, so some videos about Aztecs in here Oh, shall I do it again? Okay, let's check it out Okay, one two and a half minutes, so I'm not sure uh, so let's at least to pass through this. This is about the conquest of Incas. It was very similar. And huge empire of Incas in the mountains of Vance from Venezuela to Colombia had just experienced the civil war between two brothers fighting for the throne. Atahualpa was uh, the victor winning against his brother Huascar. And uh, they were not naive, just like Aztecs, they knew that Spaniards are different. And the expedition of conquistador Francisco Pizarro, Pizarro looking for El Dorado, legendary golden town, had in here, but his first expedition failed, and only 13 of the guys who remained loyal to him were uh, deployed at Isla de Gallo, where they spent for a couple of months until they were uh, saved. And there was legendary sentence where uh, he persuaded most of the crew to join him, that their lives buried with his riches. Here it's uh, Panama and its poverty. Choose each man what becomes a brave Castilian. So that's why they waited for some months when his uh, friend Almagro uh, came with reinforcements 
reinforcements of almost 400 men. How is possible that they defeated uh, Incas and Aztecs in here? Like in these um, same tactics. As I said, they were not naive, but still well, Spaniards provoked some conflicts. When one of the leaders, Hernando de Soto, ride his horse directly to the to the king, but the king uh, he understood if he moves he will not be the king anymore it didn't help them so they forced him to be uh, to accept jesus and to be the tributary to be the vessel of the queen of spain king of spain he said i can be no man's tributary vessel subject because i'm a god i'm a god of son still so incas were fighting but in the battle of cajamarca only 200 spaniards with a fire guns horses and dogs that were biting people. They, the Indians, Inca, so first dogs that ever bit uh, humans. So they were able to defeat 80,000 Incas. Atahualpa was captured and um, uh, he was promised to be released when uh, the ransom full, uh, full of the room, full of gold or silver would be uh, filled up. They did it. But still Spaniards uh, Spaniards uh, convicted him of killing his brother and plotting against Spain. So they executed him with using the Garrett like strangling machine like the chair. So in this way, Cusco was conquered and all the Incas resistance was suppressed. All again with the help of indigenous tribes. They were they had been under Incas occupation. So the rest of us or leftovers of Incas hid in the mountain fortresses. It was just like this part. Guys, we have also uh, the results of Spanish conquest, but I need to mention also other part and its conquest of of, uh, of Britain, of France, of uh, Netherlands, uh, even I will mention Russia. So this will be for the next lesson, guys, and the other things. So after the lesson, we will mention, we'll start probably reformation. So no, I'm not going to tell you more about this because we run out of time. So. Uh, that's all from me. I believe that you answer all. I put the uh, the absence. Or if you had the, the lesson with the practitioner that you enjoyed, it, and this is kind of revision for you, uh, that may be helpful for your assignment. So have a nice day, guys. Stay negative in tests and positive in mind. Bye bye.